we do have some uh, some news in the Sixers world that they have signed Darius Baisley to a 10-day contract. Guy has been absolutely lightening up in the uh, in the G League this year with the Delaware Blue Coats. His averages have been off the charts. He's been pretty much a 20 and 10 guy on a nightly basis. Had some really impressive performances. I had a chance to go down there and check him out. As far as my quick spark notes of his game before I throw it over to you, James, for your thoughts. He's basically kind of one of these rim running big men. He's kind of transitioned. He's a he's a guy who skipped uh, college, went right to the G League, tried to do that that kind of pathway. Did not fully work out th- for him. He still was the 23rd overall pick. Started a ton of games for the Thunder when they were in the bad Thunder era. I believe it was 118 that he totally started. He's played over 200 at the NBA level, which is pretty impressive to have that on your your G League, just kind of sitting there. Still just 23 years old. He's kind of like a P.J. Washington-ish kind of player. Not a good shooter, and that's going to be ultimately the swing skill on whether or not he makes this roster, has a long-term outlook, I feel. But what are your thoughts on Darius Baisley? Any strong feelings toward him? Yeah, I think so, like – higher level viewpoint for for basically he's basically been playing the small ball five for the blue yeah. coat and, and he's kind of been in that role where he's like not big enough to be a big but um doesn't space the floor well enough to be the three or four that he probably is measured as um but high level athlete high activity on the on the court um high like one to that kind of like he has the aspiration to want to do the right things on the court, which is a good start. Still super young, like 23 is still yeah. very young in this league. He has plenty of time to develop. I do think like you had mentioned earlier, it's like it's a placeholder situation where it's like, hey, you know, you're going to get your chance here while Joel is out. We're going to do give you a couple of chances to do some things here. Um, I wonder how much time he'll get like the Kenny Lofton situation. Like He's not ready to play in the NBA. He's not an NBA player right now. Um, Darius Baisley has shown that he can play some minutes, so I don't mind trying it out. Mo Bamba is kind of like a moot point at by this point. You know what I mean? Like he is what he is. Um, so I don't mind it at all. Like bring Darius Baisley along, let him try. One thing I will say that stood out, I have a personal anecdote. Um, one of my coworkers used to work for the Oklahoma City Thunder when Darius Baisley was was there. Um, and uh-huh. he, he raved about his character. He said he's a really, really uh-huh. nice guy. Um, they used to do community events and, and he would always stay late, um, to work with the kids and hang out and shoot hoops at the middle schools that they used to go to. So, um, seems like a really good guy. Seems like he has a lot to bring to the table. And while I don't expect a lot from him, I always like these kinds of things. Cause like, it's always these teams, you know, it's always this team that gives a guy a shot like that, that has this really niche skill set that maybe he could just play really well in a really like unique role. Um, and that could be important down the stretch and, and it also might just become nothing. So I, yeah. and probably the latter, but good for him for getting a shot. Yeah, absolutely. And that's a cool story here there. That's uh that's great to hear as well. I, I think kind of the way I look at this is it's a 10 day contract. This, these 10 days would bring you right up to the deadline, which would be the, uh, the ending of buyout deals c- occurring for teams or players potentially becoming available to teams. Yeah. I do think the Sixers are completely have their eyes on that market, seeing if a guy pops up. But I do think it's good business and a good standard to set from an organizational standpoint to reward this guy who's been playing incredibly well at the G League level. And I also do get the sense by by watching him, like he's a guy that plays hard, that wants it, that is about it, that he he wants to be a legitimate high level basketball and has still the potential to get there. That the the shooting is going to be a swing skill. That's not something that has shown improvement by the numbers at the G League level. I'll say my fear with him is he's kind of turned himself into a small ball five as a result of not being a good enough shooter rather than it being the other way around that sometimes guys kind of transition to, I can create an advantage in a way that is that it feels a little bit more default, which I don't love, but he's still a guy that I do think has a high motor is a high level athlete. He is a lob threat, which to me, I I, I love that and want more of that around this Sixers team. Even Paul Reed, not really a true lob threat in the way that I, I thought at one point he might be able to become basically more towards that style of big man. And I do like that. He's a guy that can get a rebound, put it on the floor, go coast to coast. He He's very comfortable doing that. And that's a different style of player than the Sixers have had. So yeah. it's good to bring him in. I think ultimately my ideal way is that this totally shakes out is I'm all in on Ricky Council to the point where I think the Sixers should give him a full-time roster spot, give him a long-term contract, and make it one of those deals that age as well. A four-year, $6 million deal, something like that. By the year three and four, that looks like one of the best bargain contracts in the NBA. Do that, elevate Ricky Council, and slide Baisley into a two-way slot. That's essentially the way that I think I would try and make this work and still keep that one roster spot open whether that is a a Danny Green return or another player popping up in there. I think that's how I would kind of 
function thing. So by this that this style or this game plan, you elevate Ricky Council to a full member of the 15-man squad, which I think he's earned at least that opportunity or shown me enough that I believe in him enough in the long run that that should be the case. But what's kind of your thoughts on, on that that kind of construct there? Yeah, I, I fully agree with that. I think Ricky belongs. I, he's proved that. Um, obviously, there's still like for for him, there's still a lot to work on, which there's a lot of growth there to be had, which is great. Um, but he's proved that he can play and he has the the ability to, and he, he also has the drive to get better. I think we can all kind of trust, um, you know, his work ethic and what he's proven to have come out here. And you know, you need guys like that, especially during a long season, to come in and you know, in the middle of the, a game in January, give everything he you possibly have so ricky deserves to be here i think um and then like you said it creates a little bit of a um that opening for basely or, or someone like um that would then have what turk kenny lofton and then in this scenario darius basely as the two-way guys giving you another spot to add somebody in the mix there um it feels kind of uh it would be funny for it to be danny green I, I wouldn't mind that at this point. I think I'm I'm okay with that. Um, but I bet you they're probably waiting on a big. Do you, would you say like would you think that they're waiting on a, a big man to get bought out? Although Nerlens Noel, like who who's yeah. who is out there that would be available? Like I don't really think that there's a, a large market. Nobody and to poke a quick hole in my my game plan here. I just did fact check myself. Basley's uh -oh. played too much NBA ball to be a two way guy, which I think is probably uh -huh. one of the reasons that he's got on a full time uh, G League deal at this point. So that yeah. unfortunately takes that plan out the window. So more or less, Basley is playing for his NBA job, at least for the time being. But yeah, that you can uh, only sign a two way contract with three or fewer years of NBA service. He played four years with the Thunder, uh, one year with Phoenix. Uh, so he's ineligible for that. That, so that pokes a hole in my game plan there. <laughs> I, as far as the big man conversation, I'm out on trying to get a big man. But I don't think you're going to get better than Paul Reed. Mo Bamba, as much as he's frustrating at times, he's still at, at short burst playable. And uh, like I don't yeah. think you're going to get a, a Robin Lopez or Bismack Biombo. I don't already got Robin the Lopez. I'm sorry. No, me neither. That, that little hook shot that he goes to that feels like he makes 100% of the time. I just don't – I don't know. I don't think you're going to get a guy that's playable. I, at least definitely not a guy that's an upgrade over Paul Reed. This is the reason that yeah. you paid Paul Reed. So for me, I think it's a better use of assets to sign Ricky Council. And then I can be talked into a Danny Green move that he's a good vibes guy. He is a shooter. I do yeah. believe in to, at least to knock down three-pointers in a way that is uh, comfortable. He's familiar with the organization. So I'm out on the big man idea.